You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's popping off in these crazy markets? Well, let's find out together, shall we? Because it is time for the biweekly options feast. That is the option block with the cool kids call the old OB. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you are just mainlining these days. Go ahead. Keep mainlining. It's okay. It's not addictive. Well, mostly not addictive. It might get addictive if you, if you keep going. So, okay, maybe it's very highly addictive, but we like it. It's a good kind of addictive at the end of the day because you're learning something. You're picking up an activity, picking up new skills, all sorts of fun. Again, coming up in January, it'll be 17 years. Crazy, crazy town how long we've been doing this crazy thing. Back when podcasting was just a glimmer in Steve Jobs' eye, pre, pre-iPhone, of course, way before anybody else was doing this business. <laughs> we were saying, hey, you know, uh, maybe there's something to this old podcasting thing. Let's talk about options on a podcast. And bam, the rest is history, as they say, listeners. So make sure, you, A, you're getting the full network. B, if you like what you hear, this show, anything else you like. Throw a star, like a comment, whatever your platform. There's so many of them now. You lose track of all of them. But make sure you leave a rating or review. It does help new people discover the content. And, of course, if you want to discover more content for yourselves, you want your week to continue beyond volatility views on Friday, you want to get some options oddities, you want to get awesome pro Q&As, and a whole bunch else, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to learn more. As we go around the horn, see 
who's joining us here today. First, let's go out to the freezing, the frigid shores of Cebo East <laughs> on the shores of the Hudson there, where we are joined once again by the Flowmaster himself, Mr. Henry Schwartz from the aforementioned Cebo East. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show, sir. How are things on the chilly shores of the Hudson? Uh, everything is good out here. We actually had our New York office Christmas party last night, a holiday party, uh, which was fun. Uh, Dave Hausen, our president, and uh, Fred Tomzik, our new CEO, were there. Uh, and there was a magician, and there was a fortune teller, and there was a photo booth. So it was kind of amusing. Uh, and you know, one thing I just noticed, I know they put in this special disclaimer to, to uh, offset whatever I was talking about and disavow any risk, but Throughout the whole disclaimer, they say CBOE, and we don't go by CBOE anymore. We go by CBO Global Markets, as you per correctly said. And it's funny to me that I'm sure we commissioned the disclaimer, but it's CBO Global Markets. It's not the initials anymore. Hey, I don't write the disclaimers. Blame your lawyers, sir. <laughs> I'm not the I one shall. putting the disclaimer. I'm not one reining back the flow master. I'm here to unleash you, sir. That is my job. At the end of the day, let's see who else we can unleash on the old show as we keep on rolling. Let's go away from the shores of the Hudson and up to the even colder, more frigid shores of Maine, where we are joined once again by the Rock Lobster, who I do believe is in the, the depths of winter and has no heat. Uh oh, Mr. Rock Lobster, will you survive another day? Uh, yes, it was amazing how high the bill went to fix our heater when uh, it became, uh, you know, uh, 19 degrees out. Um, it went from, oh, we will we'll do a service on your heater to, oh, you got to replace this and this, and it's going to be 6,800 bucks or something like that. <laughs> so that's kind of where we are. So we're just running on the coal stove like a bunch of savages and blah to the freaking heater. There we go. Like a bunch of savages indeed. And joining us last but not least, of course, from the mobile office yet again, Maybe we'll get a glimpse into his roaming location where we are joined once again by the unclest of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw, making a rare appearance outside of his beloved St. Charles. Mr. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show. How goes the Uncle Mike road trip palooza? Ah, so far, so good. I'm just uh, going down I-5 right now, uh, heading into San Diego to visit a client, and um, nothing can stop me from the option block. Not even, well... <laughs> beautiful sun, sunny southern california nothing's frigid here at all <laughs> that's a dangerous area to be driving through whenever i drive through that area la jolla right north of san diego into san diego i always say to myself hmm maybe we need an options insider west then i look at some of the real estate prices out there i'm like ah, i think i'm okay but <laughs> i do always have that thought a very dangerous area instead let's steer clear listeners and head right on into the trading block it's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading. And after it seemed like a little bit of uncertainty out of the blocks, we got the markets now firmly in the green. Coming in to start of the show, we have the S&P up over three quarters of a percent, about 0.8%. And the NASDAQ up over 1%, closing in on 1.5%, right around 1.4% right now. So the NASDAQ firmly has the bid in its teeth. And the Dow, kind of the lagger today, up only a quarter of a percent. And you know what? As we are wont to do these days, let's add the old Russell 2000 into the mix because you can't really get a full and complete picture of the market these days unless you're also talking about small caps because they've just been on their own mission of late. Uh, today, up about six-tenths of a percent. So that slots them in squarely right behind the S&P 500, but above the Dow today. So an intriguing day, kind of across the board, a green day across the board. Depends how much green you're getting, depends where you hang your hat out there in the markets. That means our vol friends are mostly kind of unched to down slightly. We have VIX coming in to start the show. We were at about exactly a 13. That was down about a quarter of a point from the Monday show threatening that 12 handle, but not quite there. I'm sure if I re-racked that now, it might be a different story. A VVIX 86 down about three points on the week. A VXX 1710 down about a quarter of a point. UVXY 985, so shy of the 10 handle. Is it reverse split season again? 
I suppose we'll find out down 0.15. That's what happens when you do meager reverse splits. You have to have this conversation every couple of months. Uh, SVIX, 34 and three quarters. My goodness, how uh, the SVIX has been on the rampage. Let me just look here really quickly. What is the all-time high? The all-time high, we're pretty close to. I thought we were. 3509. So not that far away from the all-time high in SVIX listeners. Uh, that puts it up about four-tenths of a point from the Monday show. And UVIX, 17.10 when we commenced operations, down about half a point from the Monday show. All right, a lot to unpack. Let's go around the horn the way we started. Let's go back out to the hallowed halls of Cebo East where the Flowmaster is recovering from his holiday party extravaganza. First off, I want to see the photo booth photos, so put some of those in the live chat. And then B, sir, what else is catching your eye in the markets today? Uh, so, you know, so I've spent a couple of days pulling together some kind of preview year-end stats. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I would say right now market conditions are kind of uh, a little bit kind of average. You know, we've, we've, we've seen you know, markets obviously, you know, done very well this year. We had a little bit of a sell-off. We came back from it. Uh, things have been a, little, been a little bit choppy, but, you know, you're also kind of getting into the year-end. Uh, people, are, people are starting to get done with their year. Uh, but I did pull together some top 10 of the year, uh, single stocks, ETFs, and index products, and just kind of what the changes were. And it won't be any surprise to you or your listeners, you know, top 10 for single stocks are things like Tesla and Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, um, Meta, that kind of stuff. But interestingly, Tesla's, Tesla option volume's up 44% on, on an average basis this year, while Apple's down 25%, and NVIDIA's up 61%. So, um, you know, it, it's been a little bit of a change. I mean, you know, you remember Apple for probably about eight years running was pretty much the most active every single day. And uh, you know, Tesla, I think we're looking at Tesla average daily volume this, this year uh, has been around 2.3 million contracts a day. Apple's barely a million. So uh, that's a big difference. And then uh, in the ETF world, it's things you've heard of like SPY, Qs, IWM, HYG. But the number five is TQQQ and number seven is SQQQ. Uh, both of those seeing um, – SQQQ seeing a jump of about 50 percent, uh, TQQQ down a little bit. So, And then when you go down to the index world, uh, you know – the, the fact that zero DTE has just been the hottest thing since sliced bread, you know, SPX volume up about 30% uh, year over year, VIX volume up 41%, and XSP, which is our mini SPX, that, that average daily volume is up 80%. Uh, and I think I've mentioned before, I, I expect XSP to kind of continue to pick up steam. Uh, we're marketing it, and also uh, people that hold, that hold SPY are discovering it and starting to use it for overriding, which will actually be a qualified overwrite, meaning if you have SPY, you can sell XSP calls, and they're considered covered uh, soon. I, I think we're waiting for some sort of rule clarification, and then the brokers have to digest that. But um, that's kind of what's going on. That's what, that's what I've been been uh, paying attention to, as well as kind of some interesting moves in the in the market. We always love a little bit of the Flowmasters year-end palooza. Stay tuned for more of that fun stuff coming, I'm sure, listeners. In our final month, crazy, crazy to say out loud, final trading month of the year. Man, this year has flown by in many aspects as we keep on rolling back up to coast, where in between sojourns on this show, he's hurriedly throwing and frantically throwing new logs on the fire to keep himself warm and keep all his machinery from freezing up. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, before you go stoke the fire again, what's catching your eye out there in the markets? Um, oh, I would just say, Henry, uh, like for XSP, we have a, we, a lot of our students like it. What they don't like is when the markets go wide. I don't know if they're pinned mm -hmm. to some weird underlying, but maybe the SIBO could do something with the uh, how they disseminate, how XSP gets disseminated. But that, that's a sidelight, but people like it because it's cash settled and uh, – it is like spy. So it is popular, but that is an annoying feature when you have stops and stuff. Um, uh, what am I noticing today? Uh, you know what? Who I missed the notice on why is tech hot again today? I thought we had the big unwind going on and da 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 da. But all of a sudden, big tech is hot again. Apple is, Apple traded $195. Um, it's up $2 today. It was look everything was looking kind of ugly for big tech, and then all of the um, 
all of the uh, the animal spirits came back. So I was I was a little curious about all that um, and how that's going to play out. So if anybody has any uh, great ideas, um, I would be all ears on that. I think it's just Tusa. Tusa's buying it all again. You know, he's on his road trip. He's free from St. Charles. He's just saying, <laughs> lift every offer. I want it all. You know him. He couldn't get enough Apple back in the day. And now that it's near 200, he can't get enough this time either. As we go on out now to the mobile office, he's in one of my favorite parts of the world. Make sure you stop down there on the little, uh, the little boardwalk area of San Diego. Hit that little amusement park. Get some tasty Dole Whip, dairy-free. It's pretty cool. Hang out with the seals. All sorts of fun. But in between doing that, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, uh, what is catching your eye out there and yet another Uncle Mike type of day? Well, I think right now, uh, first off, uh, my idea on Apple, don't put any options into it. Buy the stock, sit on it, hold it. <laughs> that's that's my big idea with Apple. Uh, we are actually using Apple as a covered call. I mean, we, Apple, it's very difficult to have any type of market exposure if Apple's not in it. Uh, we actually do have Apple in our triple income portfolio, so we are selling covered calls on it. <coughs> uh, we've been very fortunate with Apple in that we've been uh, able to sell call spreads against it on its way up. Uh, right now, unfortunately, we are in just a straight call, uh, but that's the way it goes in the covered call world at times. But we also have it in our growth portfolios. and. Um, it's, it's a bit, like I said, it's very difficult, uh, to do any type of market exposure if you're using individual stocks and not have Apple be a part of it in some way, shape or form. Uh, I think right now the, the question we need to ask ourselves from a technical standpoint of the S and P, are we going to make another run at 4,800? Uh, do, is that something with which the craziness of the, and I don't know if it's necessarily craziness, but the intensity of the rally with which we had in November can we get enough buyers to make a run at 4,800 by the end of this year? And then the all-time high for the S&P was on the first day of trading in 2022. And of course, markets did not do so well after that. Uh, but can we make another run at that? Uh, will Santa Claus be that generous this year? And, and that's the question uh, that a lot of our shorter term traders need to ask themselves <coughs> because of the fact that are we in enough, do we have enough momentum to keep it going or are we at the top right now? Are we at uh, what you could consider a double top? That's what I'm looking at right now. Um, besides that, um, the long term, uh, things are going to be good. It's me being the long term goal with which I am. And uh, that's what I'm seeing today. In addition to all those fine seals out your window there on that nice drive down to, to scenic and sunny San Diego. Let's see if these markets are scenic and sunny, at least from an overall options volume perspective, listeners. And the answer is kind of, you know, it's a decent day, all things considered. Let's start off in VIX land as we are wont to do. A little bit shy of 300K on the tape for VIX options right now, about 288,000 on the tape. It's respectable, especially when you consider that the ADB has come in quite a bit, about 300,000. It was right around 950 at its apex a little while ago. Now it's down about 665, so 288. It's respectable, I will say, out there in VIX land. SPY, 4.9 million. That's pretty robust. Usually we expect to see SPY 4.3, maybe 4.5 on, on a decently active day. Closing on a 5 million already. That's nothing to sneeze at. In SPY land, the ADV, right around 7.25 million out there. The S, as the flow master alluded to, putting up some numbers, 1.93 million contracts on the tape out there against an ADV of about exactly 3 million contracts a day out there. So the S, once again, putting up some numbers, 3 million contracts a day, that would have been just insane volume not too long ago. And because I'm a glutton for punishment listeners, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to run my my favorite report in the Flowmaster machine and see less exactly of the top 20 in SPX, most active contracts right now, listeners. Once again, all 20 are expiring today. I don't know why I keep doing this. I'm a glutton for punishment. I know what the answer is at this point. It's always 20 for 20. But once again, of the top 20 most active contracts in SPX right now, all of them go in the way of the Dodo today. If we go to the top 40, I see two, I see four, five. Actually, it looks like about eight or so in the top 40. So that's actually a little more than I expected. Usually we top out somewhere between three to five. So 
roughly eight or so uh, expiring. Not today. It may sound like, what's the big deal? But that's actually a lot. So intriguing out there in SPX land. But again, it also just shows you how zero day biased this product has become. Small caps, IWM, 489,000 contracts on the tape. That may sound like a lot, but the ADV is still almost one and a half million contracts. So not even a third of the way there. It doesn't seem like we're going to hit that today. And the Qs, 2.33 million. The ADV, a little bit shy of three and a half million, about 3.4 million in Q's land. All right, to the single names we go. And is it a banger day in single names? The answer is also kind of. <laughs> I'm damning all these markets with faint praise today, listeners. But again, kind of is, is appropriate. We're at 251,000, so just a little bit north of a quarter of a million contracts to break into the top 10 today. That's nothing to sneeze at, especially since we've been roughly 100K lower, also 100K higher in the past. So right kind of in the middle of the range today. So that qualifies as kind of. That gets us to Kenview, a.k.a. ticker symbol KView. I haven't talked about this one in a little bit. They were hot when they got spun off of J&J. They were formerly the consumer healthcare division of J&J. We saw a lot of merger ARB going up with this name between this and J&J. So they were both fairly represented in our top 10 for a little while. A KView has now fallen off, but they're back there today uh, trading $20.62, up about a buck and a quarter, a little over six, about 6.3%. So nice pop for them. And the number 10 spot, 251,000 contracts. Number nine, this is interesting, it's Goog. Notice I did not say Goog L, a.k.a. Alphabet Class A. This is the old school Goog Class C. We don't see them in our top 10 too often. Usually it is the Class A. Uh, but number nine, we have coming in uh, the Class C, 297,000 contracts Trading 138 and three quarters, up about seven and a third today. So a nice little pop for old school Goog, as opposed to Goog L. Number eight, we've got the artist formerly known as Facebook. It's Meta, 316,000 contracts. Nine, excuse me, 927. It's up nine points. 327 and a third is where it's trading. Up nearly 10 bucks, 987. Or a little over three, about 3.1%. I'm with the Rock Lobster. I missed the memo on, hey, everyone's got to buy tech again. I guess, I guess the sell-off in uh, the Magnificent Seven is over. It was short-lived because, man, they are all on the rampage today, including number seven. It's the Amazonians. The Amazonians coming in early on our list today. 336,000 contracts for them. Amazon, 147 and about a half, up nearly three bucks or about 2%. So a nice little pop for them. Again, all these, uh, all these NASDAQ names catching a nice little bit out there, including number six, a name we haven't talked about in quite some time. Maybe we'll talk about them again in a little bit. Spoiler, listeners. Uh, this is Nicola Corp. You know them, you love them, maybe you hate them. The much maligned electric truck manufacturer out there. Uh, trading a whopping 17, 79 cents today. <laughs> off nearly 20 cents or off about 20%. So a rough day for good old Nikola, they were trading a little bit north of a buck for most of this week and now breaking the buck in the wrong direction. Of course, they've been plagued with all sorts of issues and scandals over the years. But apparently, breaking the buck is what was the catalyst for just lighting up this options tape. Now, this goes back to the old stalwart of how cheap is too cheap to trade the options. <laughs> I think we might come back to this one, and maybe we'll have an answer for that. But uh, right now, number five, or excuse me, number six, Nikola, 387,000. Number five, keeping it in the end names, listeners, it's NVIDIA, a.k.a. the name everyone can't get enough of these days on the AI front. Coming a little bit early today, number five, 611,000 contracts. NVIDIA back up eight and a third, nearly 2%, trading 463, and about a third, listeners, and again, good for number five, 611,000 contracts. Number four, we were just talking about them. It's the aforementioned Alphabet Class A, a.k.a. Google, taking the number four spot with 643,000. Look at that difference, listeners. Shy of 300K for good old Goog. Google, 643,000. Look at that difference in options interest between the two. Oh, that's fascinating. Alphabet Class A, 137 and about a quarter, up about seven and a quarter on the day today. Uh, number three, we're just talking about them as well, going back to the A tech names. It is the fruit company, 661,000 contracts, uh, trading 194 and about a third, up about two bucks. So Apple, man, putting definitely in the rear view that 170 level that it broke not too long ago. How long did it, how long ago was it shy of 170? Looks like it was down the week before Halloween. So hasn't been that long. 
It was 166.89, now 194 and about a third. So nice rally. Again, most things have rallied post Powell, but I won't say all, but a lot of these big Magnificent Seven names, certainly. And again, good for number three. Number two, look at the chip zone just inverting today. NVIDIA number six, that means number two is AMD. AMD on the rampage, 126.5, up about $9.70 out there. Of course, they're trying to dip their toes in the AI water as well, saying, hey, forget about NVIDIA. What about us? We have our own quote-unquote AI chip. And that was enough to send them up about 8 and a third percent today, or 970, trading 126 and a half right now. Also good for 1.14 million. Man, it's been a while since we've seen that kind of paper out there in what is usually the bottom half of the chip zone. Number one, you know what it is, listeners. It's Tesla. Almost 1.5 million contracts on the tapes of tesla once again saying hold my bear kids <laughs> i'll show you how it's done uh, almost 240 exact just ticked a little bit below it 239.95 up about 60 cents so net not a huge day right now but actually if you look at the low it got down to about 237 and the high was uh, 244 so a little over a seven dollar range on the day out there today right now kind of unched but again good for one and a half million contracts out there in tesla land you, Labor troubles in Europe. Every day there's drama with Musk and something going on over there. But again, good for drama equates to options volume. That's what we're seeing out there again today. Uh, In terms of earnings, we still have some stuff on the docket. We had Neil this week. We had Dave and Buster's on Tuesday. We had everyone's favorite. I know the Flowmaster loves it. It's Ollie's Bargain Outlet on Wednesday, as well as Vera Bradley and some name called GameStop. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, Today we had Uncle Mike's favorite, Dollar General. I'm surprised he's traveling. On Dollar General earnings, that's usually a bit of a holiday for him. Uh, Sienna and Broadcom, and they have sheer yoga pants infamy, Lululemon. Uh, So a lot popping off. Luckily for you folks, we have updated earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports. Let's look really quickly at GameStop. They were yesterday, like I said, after the bell, they were at nearly 15 bucks, 1484. They were pricing in, get this, listeners, 18. And a half percent. We all know GameStop. You all know that at the end of the day, <laughs> any vol level <laughs> could be seen as appropriate in GameStop, given the, given the scenario out there. Uh, at the time of this report, when we ran it this morning, they had only moved three and a half percent. So they had underperformed that straddle dramatically. And that is still the case. They only moved about 3.2 percent. So this might be one of the premium rights of the season right here, listeners. Wow. And then Dollar General, they were this morning before the bell. They were at about 134 going into their announcement. They were pricing in about 8%. And once again, they under-delivered, underperformed. They delivered about 1.5% right as we ran this report. And right now, we re-rack it. They've only moved about half a percent. So another, another screaming premium sale. Wow, that's kind of bucking the trend because our, our season is mostly moving the other way. We've got Lulu after the bell. They're trading around 460 right now. They're pricing... In about 28 bucks, a little bit shy of that, 27.70. In the past, they've moved nearly 33. So Lululemon bucking the trend as well, pricing in a little bit less juice. Uh, we've got Oracle coming up next week as well. 112 is where they were trading. They were pricing in 592. In the past, they've moved 593. So they they are keeping things right in line. No change for them. Uh, so check out all that data for yourselves. If you did that, listeners, if you ran that report this morning, you would see that the season is hanging out right now at 120%. That's a banger of a season. That's that's crazy. Again, our long-term average right now is about exactly 100%. So that's dramatic outperformance. I don't care how you parse it. So again, that shows you we've seen a lot of names pricing in more juice this season, and a lot of them have delivered. This morning, the rare exception with a couple of those ones I just read out. Other than that, it's been a banger cycle. So we'll keep an eye on that as we keep on rolling. It's time for a banger episode, a banger segment of The Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody. That music means it's time to get weird. It is time to get wild. It is time to unleash the eye of Sauron and indeed the eye of the Flowmaster. See what they can collectively fix their gaze upon. 
today. Let's start things off, listeners, in a name we haven't talked about in quite some time. This is MetLife Inc., ticker symbol MET, M-E-T, trading 63 and a half right now, kind of unched on the day. On the year, a bit of a different story, off about 11 bucks or nearly 15%. They were trading uh, 74 and a half about a year ago, so you could see where that sell-off has come from, listeners. They hit their low in June. Looks like it was around almost a little bit shy of 50 bucks, 48.95. Yeah, that's ever since then, ever since June. It's been a, a nice a nice little comeback story here. So if you look at it just in the last 6 months, they're up about nearly 16% or nearly nine handles. So again, kind of a glass half full, glass half empty kind of story. Uh, but Mr. Flowmaster, looks like you noticed some interesting upside going up out there today. What did you spot out there in everyone's new favorite MetLife, sir? Uh, sure. So I noticed it because it was uh, just in terms of outright volume, it was five times normal, 18,000 calls against 500 puts. And, you know, usually I'm kind of conditioned to go look for this like super speculative uh, bullish flow because. I think that's a little that that can be fun to try to trade or make sense of. Uh, in this case, there were um, almost fourteen thousand of the February sixty-seven and a half calls that traded. That was the bulk of the activity. Uh, higher, like at 106-ish, and then 14,000 traded for 101 in a block. And so this is actually a big, big opening call seller. Uh, the strike is about 6% above spot, expires in just over two months, and it's a $1.4 million trade, and it's opening, and it's a lot larger than the average daily volume, and there's only 1,700 contracts on the call side. Uh, so, you know, kind of as you said, the stock's Stock's, you know, been kind of, you know, has had a decent range this year, and you know, you get into kind of December, and you know, people are, tr you know, are, are kind of doing their year-end, you know, tax loss harvesting, and um, and just kind of reassessing. And so, in this case, it, it looks to me like somebody's kind of said, well, you know, what I'm I'm in pretty good shape, you know, up to the that strike, the 67 half strike. The stock has been higher, right? A year ago, it was at 74 bucks. Uh, so they seem to be basically, uh, you know, pretty happy taking a million and a half, almost 1.4 million dollars in exchange for giving up that upside. And it just it made me think of one um, one thing. A colleague of mine, Jody Gunsberg, who's uh, our head of index partnerships, was on Bloomberg talking about how um, you know kind of in the current interest rate environment, you know, the, the the sector selection matters a lot, right? You know, when interest rates were zero, uh, people kind of bought almost everything. Interest rates at 5% is a different game. And she, she actually pointed out that financials were not a wonderful uh, performer in kind of this higher interest rate uh, world. Now, it may differ a little bit if you kind of separate out insurance names versus banks versus, uh, you know, fintechs. But uh, just a big, big call seller opening kind of, you know, the, the, one of the most classic uses of listed options is, you know, just, just overriding a big position. Yeah, I'm with you. We tend to usually gravitate towards the fun, sexy, bullish upside stuff because the listeners like it. It gets the blood pumping, gets everybody excited. But sometimes there can be information, useful information in these size overrides as well. Mr. Flowmaster, excuse me, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. Uh, anything catching your eye out there about somebody uh, blasting away at the upside in MetLife? Blasting away on the upside in MetLife. That is that something that we hear very often, like blasting away on the upside of MetLife? Not on I, this show. You know what? I, I seem to recall that like right around hurricane season, I guess MetLife really isn't a property casualty insurer. Um but I guess we're sort of running uh, – we're, we're kind of past hurricane season now, right? Um, and I, re I remember just general insurance when they – you know, vol gets higher and, and they sell more calls. But, I mean, I could see why – let's see. He said no stock. I mean, I could see why somebody would sell those calls. I mean, it's it's not – I don't think it's – I don't think it's terrible. I think, But I think, like, if you're a pension fund and you need one and a half million bucks – what the heck? Raise the money and and get rocking. So I don't think it's a bad, you know. I think it's a bad trade. I mean, Met's not really a big mover; it pays a dividend. Um, so not a terrible trade. I mean, you know, that's income. Income does count. Well, speaking of terrible trades, let's get to the next one that <laughs> caught the flow master's eye. <laughs> These could certainly be qualified as potentially. A terrible trades. Uh, go back to a name I just talked about, listeners. It's GameStop. We just talked about their earnings report and how they were 
a great premium sale, at least so far. Uh, trading 15 and a quarter right now, up about 40 odd cents or nearly 3%. You know the drama that has been GameStop. A year ago, they were 22 and a quarter, so they're down exactly seven bucks on the year right now. Uh, they sold off a few times. Their high came in June of, let's see, about 27 and two thirds. So obviously, they have come down quite a bit from there. Even though they have rallied a bit over the last few weeks, they were a little bit shy of 12 bucks. Uh, just at the end of November, and now they're 15 and a quarter. So they've had a nice little pop over the last month. So again, kind of a bit of a glass half full, glass half empty over the last month. They're up about 12%. So depends where you're looking, what your frame of reference is. And Mr. <laughs> Mr. Flowmaster, though, this one, I have to admit, this one did bring a smile to my face. You know, we're used to some nonsense paper out there in names like GameStop, but this... This might take the cake for, for the most nonsense of all, sir. What did you find? Well, yeah, I think everybody that's been watching markets for the last few years knows about GameStop and the meme craziness of 2021. Uh, it's still, uh, still interesting to talk about. But so the most active contract for the last couple of days, or at least in the top two, is the January 127 and a half calls. And we're talking about some pretty decent paper, like, you know, 11, 12,000 contracts a day uh, being bought to open. Uh, the, you know, the open interest is building out there. These things are 700% uh, out of the money. Uh, so, uh, you know, yeah, the stock did kind of spike up to, uh, I don't know, did it get up to like the $500 range briefly in 2021? Um you know, we've seen weird things, but the, the, the most interesting, and it's basically the buyers usually paying like 11, 12 cents. I think today, uh, what did they pay? Today they paid 11 cents, uh, uh, around 11 cents. So, um, this is a weird one. Uh, and the, the, the funniest thing of all, and you don't have to be a super smart options trader to, to know how to make some money on this, is sometimes when they pay for those one to 27 and a half calls, uh, the lower strikes are offered cheaper. So yesterday I had a friend who was buying the 60 calls for 11 cents and selling the 127s for 11 cents. So, you know, the, it's kind of, it's very, very far the money call spread. And if you have, you know, commissions to pay or transaction costs, uh, it, you may not want to buy a ton of those spreads, but it can only be positive, zero or positive in terms of valuation. And there's no margin required to, to, to own a vertical spread. So, uh, you know, we've seen this in, in, you know, when we get into these hyper speculative kind of little pockets, uh, we see that call wing, you know, we, you know, this inverted skew, right, where people are just, um, you know, paying what we would normally call kind of crazy levels for this upside. But remember, in, you know, in, in, during the meme stock craze, we had stock crashing to the upside. And, you know, Dean Kern at Macro Risk is, is, you know, the first one to say, like, you know, it's not a crazy skew if the, if the actual uh, performance of the asset jumps to the upside. Uh, you know, usually we, we worry about stocks crashing, but, uh, so I don't, I, you know, I don't know what to say. I think open interest is around 63,000 contracts in these. Now today, it looks like they actually only, only had to pay six cents to get them. So, uh, some other people are jumping into there, but, um, I, you know, I mean, one thing still kind of sticks in my mind from the meme stock time was, uh, when there, you know, when we were seeing day after day, just, just kind of, uh, crazy buying of, of, uh, GameStop calls. Thomas Petterfield was interviewed, and uh, and they asked him about what do you think about this, and and he was a little concerned because he said, you know, th you could potentially have a situation where where you can't get enough stock to settle, and so um, you know, I mean, th th it's not rational, and you know, it has nothing to do with valuation, but valuation and price. Uh, don't really have much of a connection on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So uh, it's just a, it's just kind of a funny one. If you, if you, if you think this is free money, then they're very easy to sell. And like I said, I think there's some opportunities to, to get into vertical call spread, dirt cheap, possibly even for no money. And that is, that's a good trade uh, for anybody who, uh, who knows what they're doing. <laughs> gonna say 11 cents i mean where did they get their theoreticals from <laughs> that's horrific i had sold to you all day long i can figure out something between 15 and 124 i think uh to hedge that but my goodness yeah i 
this might be a contender. I hate to have it come so late in the year because people are going to say we're recency biased. This might be a contender for just one of the worst trades of the year that we've seen in all the activity we've been profiling. And we profiled some doozies. 11 cents, you're right. They're only going up for, and I say only in air quotes, they're only going up for a paltry six cents today. That, the fact that there's six cent bid for these 127 and a half listeners, these are not even talking. I could maybe see an argument for, I don't know, Jan of 2026, something like that. Give yourself some time. These are regular Jan. These are going away in about a month. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, Mr. Rock Lobster. It might be hard to supplant this as our most ridiculous trade we've seen of the year so far. We have a good list of them in our back catalog that I was ready to break down at the end of the year. But we may have a new contender. What do you say? I mean, I, I think it, what's funny is I just put out the tweet like, what was it, two weeks ago in Oatly? You know, you don't buy the five-level calls for nickel when you can buy the twos for a nickel. Weren't they buying the um, tens? Weren't they buying the tens for, like, a nickel? Oh, they, <laughs> So what's worse, all the I tens or is, these? <laughs> it, it was a strike that made you do the happy dance. That's all I know. Um, but this one is pretty classic is, you know, because something happened once long ago in uh, crazy times, that it's going to happen again. Now... Uh, I, I, Henry, I like what Henry said, what Pedophy said about, you know, settlement issues and all kinds of problems. So, you know, when there's mechanical issues in the market that does can do really weird things to option prices. Um, and I think that's why we got a lot of that meme craziness. So I think this person I was paying up for these calls, you know, I wish him luck. Um, but I think Henry's friend that did the spread for even is probably, you know, <laughs> He's got a better shot at winning, I guess. Yeah, that could be the the winner of the year, getting a free oh sixty odd handle wide <laughs> vertical in in GameStop. Yeah, I think most people will take that. All right, speaking of weirdness, list. I thought this might take the cake for weirdness today, or just silliness. But it looks like the Flowmaster may have stolen the thunder. We shall see. I just mentioned earlier, listeners. Everyone's favorite, Nikola. This name just uh, taking a drubbing, breaking a buck today in the wrong direction. Trading 78 cents right now. On the year, it's off 67% or a buck 63. It was trading 241 a year ago. And the high actually came all that August frenzy. Remember, we were talking about some upside call activity in this one. It was Rivian. A bunch of these were hot again. And it got up to... Three dollars and seventy-one cents. It has come in almost exactly three dollars from that level now. So, how the quote-unquote mighty have fallen. Uh, but Mister Mister Flowmaster, today's paper kind of brought back a little bit of shades of the old Tesla catastrophe puts. You remember these when Tesla was trading around a buck fifty or somewhere around those levels, maybe two hundred. Someone was just loading up for size on the one strike and the tens over and over again. And we used to joke that these were. You know, CDS writers who were just using these to buy these against a complete and utter default and bankruptcy of the company. These have a little bit of a whiff about those today. We first noticed a 50,000 line. Remember we said Nikola was in our top five to our top 10 today. That's, that's a rare thing. So something must be afoot. We're probably going to come back to it. We are now, listeners. A 50,000 of the Jan. At least these are Jan of 2025. We're not talking Jan of this year. We're going out a little bit of a ways here, listeners. Give yourself a little bit of time. But again, it's the age-old question. What's, what's too much when the stock is this cheap? Uh, they bought 50,000, or they should say they traded 50,000 of the Jan 1 puts for 52 cents. Again, you're hedging a 78-cent stock going out a year and change and paying 52 cents for the privilege, if that is indeed the case, what they were up to. Again, they came back. They did more. They liked this trade so much. They did a total of 125 thousand contracts on the day let's see if any more have gone up since we've talked yes even more another fifty thousand have gone up a total of 175 thousand of these have gone up worth noting they also looks like they opened about a hundred thousand of the dece one put so that's a little bit closer to home those of course going out next week so it is just a put palooza out here Obviously, there are earnings between now and January of 2025 and Nikola, the next one coming in late February. But Mr. Flowmaster, I'm curious your thoughts on these as well. Do these give you a little bit of a, a shade, a nostalgia for the old Tesla catastrophe you put, sir? Well, you know what I'm looking at is there's a there's a hundred thousand lot flex that traded in Nikola today. Uh, so 
I think this might be some sort of a spread against listed versus flex. A hundred thousand of the eighty. The, the strike is point eight zero. Uh, the Dece of twenty twenty three eighty calls traded for six cents today. So. I don't know what is going on, but I'm actually also looking at the there is are there's it looks like there's a big one by two open in the Nikola Jan of 2025 one by two put spread open. So um, I do remember the the Tesla the Tesla downside uh, vividly. They were fun to talk about. I'm actually right in the middle of listening to the the uh, Elon Musk biography. Which is actually a pretty good audio book, uh, and and really interesting to hear about uh, how actually there's a lot on his risk tolerance and risk seeking behavior. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with these. Um, they look like a buyer uh, versus our theoreticals. Um, I, I'm not sure. My my feeling here is 78 cent stock. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of this one. They are pretty fascinating. We're going to file them in the uh, Tesla catastrophe put adjacent. Would you pay 50-odd cents, listeners, for one year and change puts against a 78-cent stock? Does that sound like a good quote-unquote do to you? I'm curious. These also could be filed in some of our fun paper <laughs> for the end of the year breakdown. Was it against the flex? Did some market maker put something up for size and flex and then turn to the listed to hedge it? Possibly. That could be one argument for why you would do something that on the surface is seemingly so, so ridiculous. But hey, we've seen weirder things as we're coming up against it. But I do want to get some listeners on. So let's get really quickly to the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail block. Our question of the week right now is we're just giving you a chance to put your crystal ball hat on. Guess where VIX will close at the end of the year. Gave you four choices above 15, 13 and a half to about 15, 12 to about 13 and a half and below 12. And right now, the 12 to 13 and a half level, which surprise, surprise is where we're hanging out, is winning with about 43 percent, followed by number two north of 15. So betting on some end of year ball spikes. A little over 20% and a little bit of, right around 18% each for 13 and a half to 15 and below 12. I sped through that because I want to get to uh, some of your questions. Let's go out here to this one from Adam K. Uh, very timely. He says, hello, OB All-Stars. Well, hello, Adam. He says, long-time listener to the network, although I admit I didn't play your content <laughs> to my unborn children. Yeah, he's referring to uh, the listener who wrote in, I believe it was to our options boot camp program and and showed a, a photo of an MP3 player around a pregnant woman's belly, and he was playing uh, our content to his kid. <laughs> Which is terrifying to have that child hearing my voice the first thing he hears. But you know what? Could be a good formative thing for him in the long run. But I digress. Let's keep rolling. He says, I saw the article below about short selling in Israeli ETFs ahead of the October 7th attacks, and I thought I'd follow up to see if you saw any suspicious options activity around that same time. This seems to have the same whiff of the infamous Bin Laden puts prior to 9-11. I hope you guys have a great holiday. Well, hope you do as well there, Adam. Thanks for being a long-time listener. He's included a link to, looks like, an article from The Economist here talking about this. This has been making the rounds for the last few sessions. A few people have hit us up about this. I haven't had a chance to dive deep into it myself. I'm curious, maybe the Flowmaster, uh, who lives on Flow day-to-day, -day, maybe if he has. But if you haven't seen it, listeners, there was a study just came out. A uh, paper by Robert Jackson Jr., a former commissioner of, of the Securities Exchange Commission, and Joshua Mitz of Columbia University, analyzing trading activity immediately before and immediately after October 7th. Uh, they focus a lot on short selling, so in a lot of various Israeli names, including an Israeli ETF, ticker symbol EIS, which they said the short interest, the short volume exploded the day before the attacks, right around a quarter of a million shares, which were then bought back immediately the next day for about a million dollar profit, which is way outside the norm for that name. Uh, they also do more salient for us, though. They do point to an increase in open interest for what they term, I like this, risky short dated options contracts on his Israeli firms traded here in the US. So I believe the underlying flow went up overseas on the Israeli exchanges, but the options flow, obviously, going up here so these were weekly contracts so obviously 
dated and geared around a very specific time frame. And they talk about uh, two sets of Israeli stocks, one expiring on the 13th and the one expiring after that date, and talk about how they saw some uh, interesting spikes in open interest, including an increase of over 500% on the day immediately before the attack. So it does seem like maybe there was some skullduggery, which, again, as our listener points out, would not be the first time one of these entities has attempted to profit from their actions. And Mr. Flowmaster, you're out there crunching the flow day in, day out. I'm sure people have asked you about this. You probably heard this, and maybe you've even seen this research. Uh, I'm curious if you have any thoughts for our listener. Who was it? Uh, Adam, where was it? Adam K. He wants to know if, if you've seen any of this flow, sir. If you notice it for yourself. You know, I, I do tend to go look and, and, you know, in hindsight, try to figure out if there's any, any, any sort of inkling. I actually, I saw the headline and I saw that it was overseas, uh, stocks. So there wasn't much to look at here. Uh, I, and then I did go look at the ETF. I didn't see anything, um, unusual like the, the and, and among like the, you know, a lot of the Israeli ADRs are like, you know, biotechs and things. And I just, I dug around, I did not see anything. Um, you know, VIX volume, you know, just in terms of, of, you know, trying to do something ahead of a, a global macro event, VIX volume was, uh, heavy that day, but it was actually more puts than calls. So I, I don't. There's nothing that I've been able to dig up. Interesting. Flowmaster maybe being a little bit of a point counterpoint here for this study. Yeah, you're right. I haven't had a chance to dig in myself. Uh, something I'll also point out. A lot of these, you know, options as as Flowmaster mentioned, they're not exactly size ADVs on them. So it would be easy to maybe interpret any sort of spike in volume as something. But again, I haven't had a chance to look at them. I'm going to dig in myself. So far. Uh, the flow master who, who spends day in, day out looking at the flow, saying he hasn't seen anything, which is kind of interesting. So, yeah, interesting stuff. I have seen a lot of this data myself. I haven't had a chance to crunch the numbers. But intriguing stuff there as well. But we got to keep on rolling, listeners. We're coming up against it. It's time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on. We've had just enough time for Uncle Mike to pull over on the side of the road there in beautiful, scenic San Diego and enjoy a delicious Dole Whip by the beach. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week until the Monday show? Well, I think it's like I was saying at the beginning of the show, watching to see <clears throat> the 4,800 mark, not necessarily this weekend by any means, uh, but... Um, towards the end of the year, and then continuing to watch bonds. Bonds are what's really driving this market. Uh, interest rates are what it's all about at this stage. Uh, it appears that the Fed has eased off, or at least that's the perception of what they're going to be doing, but uh, you never know. So bonds need to be at the focal point, in my opinion. Hope you're enjoying that delicious Dole Whip, sir. Mr. Mr. Rock Lops, the same question for you. What are you keeping an eye on until the Monday episode of the old OB? Well, um, we do have a non-farm payroll number, don't we, tomorrow? And we have a, a open market committee meeting on Wednesday. Like, So the Fed, like, oh, they're going to start cutting or whatever anybody believes that I think is all crap. They're just probably not going to raise anymore. Um, so, I mean, I think the market's kind of in sort of uh, – feasting on that so we'll see if, if they both do but you know like everything's kind of in play for the santa rally here that's all i'm going to say and if big tech is going to continue its rally then i don't know just just watch it go up you know <laughs> two styles idea just buy the stock and watch it go up it's gonna work <laughs> especially right now that's the new rock lobster newsletter subscribe to it now buy the stock and watch it go up by by the rock I mean box. sometimes it works a lot. <laughs> Why well, fight the momentum? And Mr. Flowmaster, last but not least, sir, what are you keeping an eye on for you until your next appearance next Thursday? Uh, well, I, I, I'm actually going to be watching GameStop pretty closely because these 127 halves, I think, are just really interesting. And um, you know, we do know the power that that the retail hordes can have on the market. Uh, and then we're doing some pretty interesting volatility work. Uh, I actually am working on a matrix of uh, realized volatility between from one minute to the next. 
uh, out of the SPX. So uh, if I can get it to work, I will I will show it to you. But basically, the question came up basically, you know, kind of how volatile is the market between 12 and 1230 or, uh, you know, 955 and 1005, right? We know we know we see dislocations around 10 a.m. when there's economic numbers. Uh, so just trying to kind of I, like literally taking this the concept of this short dated trading the zero DTE it's such a wave and saying okay fine so you know the next step is going to be you know people getting into trades for two hours right they already are in a lot of cases and so trying to kind of quantify that because most of the research most of the the you know analytics you can get out there are just you know close to close volatility which you know we all know has uh, it really does not you know, capture the entire market, especially if you're, if you're, you know, really trading intraday. All right, listeners, that music means we've come to the end of another journey through the world of options. Man, what a journey it was. We started off talking about some volume, got into some crazy verticals. <laughs> I will admit I will be shopping maybe for some free verticals a little bit later in GameStop, Mr. Flowmaster. You have caught my attention and intrigued me, as you usually do. But that music means we are done, at least for right now. Don't worry, we'll be back in a bit with Twifo coming up a little bit later on the on-demand side. But before we go, let's go around the horn. Mr. Flowmaster, we'll start with you, sir. If folks want to check out all the cool goodies, maybe they want to analyze some of this flow for themselves using your tools, where should they go? What should they do? SIBO.com uh, slash RMA, which is Risk and Market Analytics. And you can request a trial for any of our platforms. Uh, reach out. Uh, we are, we're always happy to help. There you go, SIBO.com slash RMA, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. Not just on Trade Alert, even though Trade Alert, pretty darn cool if I do say so myself. I do use it a lot, but you got all kinds of things there. FT options under that umbrella. You got live vol, all sorts of goodies. SIBO.com slash RMA, the place to go to begin your journey down the slippery slope of all those tools. Once you, once you taste one, you're going to keep coming back. And Mr. Uncle Mike, as he's finishing up that delicious Dole Whip, sir. Where should folks go if maybe they want the uh, Uncle Mike Mobile to stop by their house? Uh, by all means. Uh, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. You can make an appointment. I'll give you a call. We'll talk. Uh, if you're looking for a financial advisor uh, who is not afraid of the option product, look me up, stcharleswealth.com. I do feel for you, sir, having to go all the way out to the, uh, the difficult, difficult environs of San Diego, sir. My heart bleeds for you. A difficult trip, by all means. It's awful out here. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's awful. Try not okay. to have too much fun while you're out there. <laughs> StCharlesWealth.com, the place to go to learn more. And last but not least, check out his new newsletter. Just buy all the stocks and watch them go up. Mr. Flowmaster, should be Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. Where should folks go if they want to get their hands on that? Uh, OptionPit.com. OptionPit.com. Check it all out. Check out all my goodies. There you go. Check them out. Optionpit.com, the place to go. We've got to get on out of here. Back again today, listeners. A little bit different time for Twifo. Usually it's about a half an hour after this show, mixing things up a little bit, coming back at 3 p.m. Central. We're going to be joined for our annual check-in uh, by our buddy, Mr. Derek Salmon. He runs all the options over there at CME. So he always comes armed with some interesting nuggets, some interesting data that we can sink our teeth into for the year, what's been going up over there at CME. He always gives us a glimpse or two, a peek, into what's coming down the pike for next year. So if you're intrigued by all things futures options, make sure you tune in for that. That'll be hitting the network on demand wherever you get this show. Then, of course, back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern, for volatility views. And back after that, for you pro folks, a little bit of the old oddities. And back again on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX, and many S&P 500 XSP options allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com/spx today to learn more.
The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.